What's going on everybody? My name is Mike Montgomery and today I'd like to show you how I built this bent wood coffee table on Modern Builds. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. To learn more, make sure and follow the link in the description, squarespace.com forward slash modern builds. Today's video is my contribution to the Rockler Bent Wood Challenge, which is being hosted by the Modern Maker Podcast. That's my podcast that I do with Vinny Ueda from Homemade Modern and Chris Salamone from Four Eyes Furniture. The official launch is now and the challenge is open until October 31st. And the cool part is there's really only one rule. Just build a project incorporating bent wood in some way and submit it on Instagram using the hashtag Rockler Bent Wood Challenge. This is the third podcast challenge that the Modern Maker Podcast has done and we could not be more excited for this one. In the past, we've done a two two by four challenge and a plywood challenge and they both went great. Not only are these challenges awesome for getting the community involved, but it also serves as a really great learning resource for people trying to get into new things. Now, of course, there's a lot of different ways to bend wood. I'm talking kerf cutting, bent lamination, maybe even using a steam box like what I'm doing today. I'm gonna be using this Rockler steam bending kit to create U-shaped coffee table legs. Now this was a big learning experience for me and I failed quite a bit along the way, but I thought it would be useful to you guys who have never steam bent anything before to see my process and all my failures. So let's go ahead and get this project started and before we do any bending, we need to build the steam bending box. Let's get it going. I'm building my steam bending box out of pine one by eights that I picked up from my local lumber store. The boards that I bought were 8 feet long, so I'm cutting them in half to create a 48 inch long box. Make sure to not use any glue or adhesives to attach your boards together. For a steam bending box, you only want to use mechanical fasteners. That's why I'm using my Craig K5 pocket hole jig. Pocket hole screws are just quick and convenient. I'll leave the jig that I used in the description below, as well as a cheap $20 jig also from Craig. I cut these short pieces of wood out of a pine one by two and I'm using pocket hole screws to attach them to the bottom board of the box. These are gonna be risers that lift the wood off of the bottom of the box so that the steam can circulate throughout. Rockler is nice enough to provide written plans with their steam bending box and I'm following those loosely. In the plans it says not to build a box bigger than four inches by four inches by 48 inches long and obviously I'm using one by eight which is maxing that out. My recommendation is to go a little bit smaller with the box, make sure and fit it within those 4x4 four four guidelines. Once I had all four sides of the box connected, I could throw in some more pocket hole screws to get everything secure. Here, I'm applying some weather stripping to where the lid of the box is going to go. This is just going to provide a little bit better seal. You've seen me use this trick before whenever I install hinges in hardware, and that's using Gorilla Super Glue Gel to hold the hardware in place while I pre-drill pilot holes for the screws. This just makes sure that everything is aligned and secured tight without moving around. After mounting the hinges, I installed a latch on the opposite face of the lid to hold everything closed tight. Before installing the back panel of the box, I needed to drill a hole for the brass connector between the hose and the box. All the hinges, latches, and fittings for this project are included in the steam bending kit, which is linked in the description. We all know that heat rises, so we want to make sure and tilt the box so that the steam goes from the back of the box forward to the front of it. 
Now you could go crazy making really nice legs for your box. I just threw it on a couple pieces of scrap plywood. Then I loaded up some pine 1x3s and 1x2s for my first round of steaming. This Rockler steam binning kit could not be more simple. There's a single hose that connects the steamer to the box. Then all you need to do is fill the reservoir up with water and turn it on. This kit acts like a humidifier on steroids and pumps a ton of heat and steam into this box. As a rule of thumb, you want to make sure your box is over 200 degrees and to let your board steam for one hour for every inch of thickness. A really convenient way to measure that is to just drill a quick hole and insert a meat thermometer into the top of your box. Like I mentioned, my box was a little bit oversized and I was only able to get it to about 190 degrees. While I let those boards steam, I grabbed some scrap particle board from a previous project and created a form blank with it. I've got a leftover glass coffee table top and I thought it would be perfect for this project. Because I'm bending the wood for the base, I thought it would be really fun to be able to see through the glass top. So here you see me laying out cut lines for a simple U-shaped base. With my lines drawn, I grabbed some Gorilla wood glue and I used that along with some screws to attach my form pieces together. I used spring clamps around the perimeter of the form to make sure everything stayed in place and then to make sure I had a good bond towards the center of the board, I ran some screws through the form also. I used the jigsaw to cut my form pieces to size and my only tip for this tool is to go slow. If you rush a jigsaw, the blade has a tendency to get out of square and lean in one direction or another. If you go slow, it'll give you a lot better cut. You can see pretty clearly how I wanted this form to work. There's two pieces of the form with the negative space for the wood in between. Around the time I had this finished, it had been about an hour, so I grabbed my pine 1x3s out of the steam bending box and I tried to throw them in the form. Now obviously, I did this wrong and I'll talk about this later in the video, but as you can see, the pine was not able to bend much before it cracked. So obviously that did not go as planned, but I did a little bit of research last night about steam bending and I realized I used that form completely wrong. My ultimate goal was to take both pieces of the form and marry the two together to create the bend in the one by two or the one by three. But after watching a YouTube video about bending wood, ironically on Rockler's YouTube channel, I realized all I need is the piece of the form that goes on the inside of the bend. So I went ahead and reloaded my steam bending box and I started making alterations to my form. Here, you see me using the hole saw to create a bunch of recesses that F-style clamps can latch into to hold the wood around the frame. You also see me using my RZ mask, which is my favorite dust mask in the game. They're super lightweight, comfortable and convenient, and stay out of the way of eyeglasses and hearing protection. Plus, they've got replaceable filters so you know you're always breathing safely. If you want to learn more, make sure and follow the link down in the description. That's rzmask.com slash modernbuilds, and make sure and use the discount code modernbuilds at checkout. This second set of bins went way better than the first. Obviously, I was a long way from success, but I was on the right track. The S-style clamps did a great job of holding the board to the form, but it just cracked way too easily. This pine that I built the steam box out of has warped quite a bit over my first couple of steams, and I'm worried that I'm not getting the temperature high enough. So far, I've gotten it to about 192 degrees Fahrenheit, and I want that to top 200. So to close up all these air gaps that have been created, I'm gonna get some Gorilla Tape and seal all this up. With this method, I was finally able to get the temperature up to 200 degrees, although I wasn't able to pass it. My buddy Mike Clifford from the channel Industrial Maker saw me struggling on my Instagram stories with those 1x3s yesterday and gave me some good advice. He basically said that hardwoods bend a lot easier than softwoods. And after I did a little bit of Googling, that was confirmed. So while I was at the store, I picked up these poplar strips of wood. They're basically a quarter of an inch thick and an inch and a half wide, and I'm gonna try bending these. I mentioned earlier that you wanna keep the boards in the steam bending box for an hour for each inch of thickness, and these are only a quarter of an inch thick, but I still kept them in the box for one full hour to make sure that they were fully saturated since I couldn't get the temperature as high as I wanted. These poplar strips bent way better than the pine 1x3s that I used, if you could have imagined, but the radius on the form was still a little bit too tight to get a complete bend out of it. Before I went into this project, I knew I would have a few failures before I found success. I just kept trying and taking down notes with what was successful and what I could do differently. 
Still a fail, but at least we're getting closer. I'm gonna keep doing tests throughout the night and I'm gonna figure out what to do here. Having a little bit higher temperature in the box seemed to help and I kept putting the boards in for 30 minutes longer with each steam. As I went, the boards gradually got more pliable and I was even able to get my first successful bend. Of course, they all weren't that successful. Definitely not a success, but a solid improvement. Really quickly, I'd like to give a huge thanks to this video's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is the number one shop for you to build your own website. And the best part is, you need zero website building experience. Squarespace has a library of built-in designer templates that look incredible right out of the gate. All you need to be able to do is drag and drop files and edit text blocks, and you're on your way to a one-of-a-kind website. Squarespace sites look amazing on desktop, tablet, and mobile devices. That way, you're sure to stand out no matter where visitors find you. And setting up an online store could not be easier with Squarespace. With a Squarespace store, you can accept payments online and have unlimited products. That's right, there is no limit to the number of products you can sell on Squarespace. So to learn more, make sure and follow the link down in the description, that's squarespace.com forward slash modern builds to start your free trial. Squarespace is so confident in their service, you can actually build your own test site before entering any of your credit card info. Then whenever you're ready to launch your first site, make sure and check out using the code modern builds for 10% off your first site. Thanks Squarespace. Day three, and even though yesterday I wasn't able to get a completely successful bend, I would still say there were some big improvements. I learned that bending slower was actually a little bit better. By doing that, I was actually able to get one of the bends on a couple of the boards to be perfect. I just wasn't able to get two bends on one board right. Now poplar, which is the wood I was using yesterday, is technically a hardwood. It just happens to be the softest of all the hardwoods. So instead of using those same boards today, I've got a piece of eight quarter inch maple here that I'm gonna cut down into eighth inch strips. These are slightly thinner than the poplar boards I was using, and this maple board has really straight grain, which I'm really excited about. Hopefully that'll prevent a little bit of splitting. As soon as I grabbed these boards, I knew I was gonna have better results than the night before. They were clearly saturated throughout and they even started bending under their own weight. So I did my best to get them in the form quickly and start bending. The longer you let your boards cool, the less pliable they become. That's why you see me bending both sides at once, then coming back to do each side individually. So it only took three days of attempts, but I finally had my first successful bend. Holy crap, it worked. This is the first successful run I've had. I am so happy. It's funny, I didn't want to overreact on camera, but I was so excited. Seeing this clean bend was so rewarding. On my second set of maple bends, I was sure to use scrap three quarter inch plywood, not only in the top of the form, but also to support the two sides. This just helps spread the clamping force a little more evenly and reduce gaps. I let my pieces sit in the form overnight, then I came back and I made some quick alterations to my form. My next step is to glue my three layers together, but before I did that, I put a layer of Gorilla Tape down to make sure my pieces don't stick to the form. These silicone glue brushes are one of my favorite products that Rockler makes. I'll leave them linked in the description, as well as every other tool and jig that I use that they sell. This final run of glue ups could not be less stressful. The boards were already at the right shape and I had 30 minutes of working time with Gorilla Wood Glue. So I just took my time, made sure everything was lined up and I used plenty of clamps to reduce gaps between my boards. I let the glue cure overnight, then I came back and I cut half lap joints in each one of the boards. This is going to allow the two leg assemblies to interlock and become really strong. On this lap joint, I used my Japanese pull saw to cut curves into the wood and then remove all the excess with a chisel. I was able to cut the second lap joint on the table saw because the legs weren't in the way.
From there, I used a little bit of wood filler where I had some delamination in spots, then I sanded everything with 80 and 150 grit sandpaper, and finally applied a coat of Maker Brand Simple Finish. The tabletop is glass, so I used these clear rubber pads on each of the legs so that it had something to set on. And with that, this coffee table is done. I could not be more excited with how this project came out, and I'm really happy that I finally took the time to learn to bend wood. It's something that I've been interested in for such a long time. This first coffee table took a lot of trial and error to figure out, but making a second would be the easiest thing in the world now that I know what I'm doing, and that's awesome. So I really hope you all enjoyed this project. It was a ton of fun for me to be able to experiment and try something that I've been wanting to do for a really long time. I was really impressed with the Rockler steam bending kit and there's a few takeaways that I wish I knew from the get go. In the directions that Rockler provides, it says don't make a box with an inside diameter bigger than four by four by 48 inches long. I built my box out of one by eights and that's why I struggled getting the temperature to where I needed it to be. Lesson number two was use a hardwood, not a softwood. Pine just has so much space between its growth rings that it's really hard to get that wood to stretch over a tight radius. Last but not least, if you do bit lamination, do not take it out of the form too soon. The first set of legs I made, I let them sit in the form for about four hours and the corners delaminated a tiny bit. I was able to throw it back into the form and I got it mostly fixed, but on my second set of legs, I let them sit in the form overnight and they worked great. Almost no spring back at all. Thanks again to Rockler for supporting the Modern Maker podcast. Make sure and listen to this week's episode if you're interested in competing in the Rockler Bentwood Challenge. Other than that, big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. And if you're not already, make sure and follow me on Instagram. I am at Modern Builds. Sorry for the gap in videos, but I got some really cool stuff lined up. So make sure and hit that subscribe button to stay updated. Until next time, this has been Modern Builds. Bye, everybody. Huh?